Welcome to QRP Labs HQ. Chaos as usual, and I want to introduce the new QMX transceiver on a video properly for the first time. It has been said that my videos are too long, so I'm going to make this a short video just introducing QMX and then I will follow up with more details later. Now this is the original QCX, the CW transceiver, that started it all in 2017 for the Yota summer camp build-a-thon that was hosted by the RSGB in the UK. After a little while a German company made this nice aluminium enclosure for it and I replaced the QCX with the QCX Plus and that was that came in May 2020. Um, this is a heavily modified version uh, it's all through whole components, larger PCB, nice aluminium enclosure with a rear panel with all the connectors on it. Not long after that there were some people who said that the QCX Plus is larger than the original QCX and they wanted a smaller version that would be good for POTA and SOTA and other portable operations so I designed the QCX Mini. Um, very small as you can see fitting in my hand here and uh, it has the cat control serial port on the right hand side and a PTT output the RF and on the on the left hand side the DC power input paddle input and the earphones output then in 2021 I came out with the digital transceiver the QDX which includes a 24-bit USB sound card um, the USB interface shown here includes a virtual com serial port for cat control as well as that USB sound card QDX is a five band digital transceiver, so it includes uh, pin diode switched low pass filters for 80, 60, 40, 30, and 20 meters. And we later also did a high band version which covers 20 to 10 meters. Then, as one of my New Year's resolutions for 2023, I decided to make a big push and finalize what I had been thinking of for a while, which is called QMX. So, M is the merger of the QCX Mini and the digital QDX uh, both basically in the same package as the QCX Mini, the same size as the QCX Mini but providing all the functionality of both the QDX and the QCX Mini as well as providing the potential in the near future for SSB operation just with a firmware update. So internally, the board assembly resembles that of the QCX Mini. It's the same size boards as the QCX Mini. Here it is from the bottom. You can see that the uh, hardware is very much more like really a QDX. So there's a powerful STM32 processor here and the same 24-bit uh, ADC chip that we use in the QDX, the PCM1804, to op amps LM4562 high performance low noise op amps driving the PCM1804 INQ channels uh, in differential mode however unlike the QDX we have a display added and the controls board added uh, just like on the QCX Mini and we have a 24-bit DAC output and op amp driver here for earphone output as well as all the connectors from the QCX so the uh, paddle input and then on the right hand side we have the PTT output and the RF connector just like on the QCX Mini but instead of the serial port we have here a USB port. This is a USB-C and the main reason for that was that the full size USB-B does not fit between these two I would have had to enlarge the enclosure which would have been a terrible thing. You might notice here on the uh, controls panel there's a built-in electric microphone here between the two buttons you can also plug in a electric microphone in the uh, paddle input here instead of a paddle when using it for SSB but that'll be a future firmware update at the moment it does the uh, digital modes and CW modes only Now if I pull the boards apart here you'll see that another very important difference is that we have these um, two 
buck converter power supply boards and uh, the one on the left here is actually also a reverse polarity protection switch and a soft power switch whereas the one on the right here is a 3.3 volt regulator. Now these are actually two separate boards. The reason for that was to reduce the board area and they uh, have the very important feature that the switching frequency is controlled by the processor and can be moved away so that the harmonics can be moved away from the operating frequency and not cause interference. I'm going to talk about these power boards in a lot more detail in another video because it's a big topic. Other than that we have three sets of low pass filters in the same way, same design as the QDX, the same power amplifier here, an output transformer and switching bias pin diode converter that we have on the QDX. Um, the layout is a lot more compact, uses T30 size toroids instead of T37 toroids. Um, you have to really squeeze things in here to get it in the available space. There's also here a output SWR bridge that can continuously monitor the forward and, ref and reflected power and calculate SWR. So that will be useful for an on-screen display of SWR and also uh, for SWR protection. The band pass filter and trifilar transformer here for the uh, double balance quadrature sampling detector are both the same as the QDX. So it's very much the, a hybrid between the QDX uh, electronic design and embedded SDR but with a much more powerful STM32 processor here than the uh, QDX has and also the um, mechanical design of the QCX Mini. There's also over here on the side here a power modulator so, it, so we can use that amplitude shaping for um, Blackman Harris or Gaussian or raised cosine RF envelope shaping and also for EER SSB which is another thing which will be coming in a future firmware release and discussed in more depth later. The board comes like this and is broken apart into the display board up here and the controls board snap out of that and the later will fit through this hole when you put it together and the main board here this is the top side of it the SMPS buck converters fit on here and the connectors here, the display connector here. These two buck converter boards all snap out and uh, fit on 2x4 and 2x3 pin header connectors which they plug into the main board. And this is just a leftover piece of PCB, spare space, and is uh, a nice key fob if you want that on your keychain to be a proper QRP labs fanboy. The PCB itself is a six layer board and uh, two of the layers are just pure ground plane. Uh, one layer is used for signals which I couldn't fit in any other way and the final layer is used for ground and power connections. So you see a really compact board and you certainly have to have your wits about you when you when you build it and take your time and follow the instructions very carefully. I will do another video about the common pitfalls that people encounter and how to bring up the unit safely. So here you see the left button uh, doubles as an on off switch as well as the gain control and if you press it single time it gives you the mode change shown here CW or digi mode um, if you do a double click it changes the band it's at the moment a five band transceiver for 80 60 40 30 and 20 meters we will have a high band version of it later and hopefully also a mid band version which will be really good for SOTA or other portable operations just like QDX it has a built-in terminal interface and can do these uh, RF sweeps with its built-in signal generator for, for tweaking the performance and lots of other goodies in the uh, terminal emulator. You can also plug in a GPS and do standalone whisper and CW beacon just the same way as you can on a QCX Mini. So that's about it for a quick introduction. Um, this is QMX the new, very small, very compact 80, 60, 40, 30 and 20 meter CW 
and digital modes transceiver with SSB coming soon. Um, it will be able to do lower, lower sideband, upper sideband, reverse mode CW. It's very, very high performance and also very low cost. It comes at $95 for the kit, another $20 for the enclosure. We also do offer it as an assembled and tested and calibrated transceiver for an additional $50 if you don't want to build the kit. Thanks for watching and more coming soon.